Hey, it's great to have as my guest today, uh, David Brower, a fellow voiceover artist, full-time working um, voice talent. Let's back up a little bit and just share okay. share with us your background. How did you get to where you're at now? What, what has been your path? Well, I was in the radio for a very long time, uh, 28 years, uh, doing everything from on air to sales manage management. And my last gig, I was a, a vice president, of corporal uh, or corporate general manager for a group of stations in California. And, and I decided to get out of radio uh, in California, moved to Colorado. Um, and I'd been doing freelance voice work part time for like 15 years. So when I got to Colorado, I called my uh, one client that I'd been doing all that time. <laughs> And said, "Hey, I want to continue doing the voiceover stuff for you." And and uh, but I moved to Colorado, and I'm I'm going to do this dot com job. And uh, he just started laughing at me. He was a good friend of mine. And I said, "Well, what's so funny?" And he said, "Well, when that dot com thing doesn't work out, he said we're thinking about opening up an in house agency uh, office in Denver, and you could be the guy." So three months later, the dot com industry went south, and uh, I'm on the phone begging for a job. And uh, six months later. Um, they hired me uh, as a marketing manager for the eighth largest automotive group in the country, and I did that for six and a half years. Wow. And then the economy went south three years ago, um, and so they closed my office, which meant my job went away. And, but I told my wife a year earlier, I said, you know, I could do this gig for a few more years, but I'd really like to do my uh, dream job of voiceover work. So I went ahead and built a little studio in the house. So the good news was when I lost my job, I took a leap of faith and started voiceover work full time the next day. Wow. Not yeah. much of a smooth, tra I mean, easy transition. You just went. Um, yeah, none turkey. whatsoever. So three years later, here I am uh, being very blessed to have had a, uh, a quite a growth spurt. And you're right. Thanks to my marketing experience, it really helped me a lot. Well, obviously, you're very talented. And if anybody visits, visits your website, which is, by the way, Papa's Voice. Dot com. Right. But uh -huh. there's got to be a story behind that, too. Well, yeah, my um, uh, my wife and I have been married seven years, and uh, we, we have our own respective as well as collective grandkids. So yeah. her, her grandkids all live around here. Mine are all in Oregon. And, and uh, But anyway, her oldest granddaughter um, started calling me Papa when she was about two. And it just stuck, <laughs> and everybody called me Papa. And I'm going, you know what? I love that. That's now the name of my company. That's the name of my website. That's the name of my identity. So, yeah, my company is Papa LLC, and I've got <laughs> papasvoice.com. Um, I have an automotive niche, uh, so I have a uh, papasautovoice.com. Oh, okay. And then I have a blog, papaunplugged.com. Uh, well, I became a grandfather myself a year ago this month, so I figured when I saw Papa's voice, there must be a story something like yeah. that. And there's yeah. someplace, but well, as, congratulations. That's, oh, uh, thank you. Quite like that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the greatest. Yeah. Well, and the reason I mentioned your website, uh, if anybody goes there and visits and listens to your demo and your work, you're obviously a very gifted and, and talented man. But there, I think, is a misunderstanding w among people who get into the business that if I'm talented enough, if my voice is good enough, if I'm if I'm a uh, gifted voice actor, then I can make or I can be successful in voice work. Well, right. you may or may not, but that's, I think, at least in, in my humble opinion, about half the equation, you, I think, understand as, as a businessman, the need to have a little bit of business savvy and some marketing strategy. And part of that has been, and what really caught my attention recently was your blog on using referrals. Uh, yeah. Maybe let's, maybe at first just kind of address the need for business knowledge or experience to get into the business. You know, the more voiceover talent that I talk to, the more I realize how afraid they are of marketing because they don't have very little, if any, experience in it. And it's really not as complicated as we usually make it out to be. So, in fact, I did a blog on that. Um, I call it the um, uh, three-legged stool. And the, the long and the short of it is, uh, picture yourself sitting on a stool and one leg is your voice. You have the ability to, to deliver a product. Your second leg is your equipment. You have the ability to deliver a quality audition. And your third leg is your marketing. So if any one of those three legs aren't there, you're going to fall on your butt. Right? Right. So you have to pay attention to all three of those. So when you get scared of the marketing, you go, okay, well, what can I do? Because there's so much of it. So you go, okay, I can direct mail, I can email, I can phone call. You make this whole litany, this whole list of the different marketing options that are available out there. And there's a ton of them, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. But you pick two or three that you're comfortable with. That's it. Just two or three. 
and you focus on those two or three and you do them the best that you can and all of a sudden and you focus on referrals which we'll talk about and all of a sudden you'll see your business grow and then as you grow you think back to the three-legged stool and that's a quick 10 second reminder of whether you're doing your business right or not mm. it, it seems to me um and i'd be interested in your take on this when it comes to marketing and, and you mentioned uh, you know the the con- contacting prospective clients there's a real fear among people uh maybe even a greater than public speaking the idea of picking up a telephone or making oh, I contact hate it. Yeah. i hate it even I today still, you still hate it oh i hate it yeah when i was a very successful salesperson and and sales manager and general manager and whatever i hated cold calling then i hate it now <laughs> you know but with that said, I also know that 65% of my business comes from referrals and people that I know. Interesting. So that reduces the stress on the cold calling because I'm working from a comfort level. I'm working from a comfort zone. So 65% of your business comes from referral. I, when, I, when I read that, I was absolutely blown away by that. that there, there's something to be learned here. So how do you do that? There's a couple of ways. One, uh, every email signature that I have has a subliminal comment about referrals. You know, I'm blessed during the confidence of, of people's referrals. Uh, my uh, every invoice I sent out has a has a request for a referral in it. Um, every time, not every time, but most every time I talk to a client after uh, completing a project, I'll ask for a referral. Sometimes I wait and I'll give you an example of, of how that works sometimes. Um, I have a um, national hotel chain uh, that's a, an account of mine, and I didn't ask him for a referral at the at the beginning. We did business for probably ten months, and then I sent him a, a referral uh, or asked him for a referral. And the reason I did, I wanted to establish a long term relationship with him and make sure that we were comfortable and working together and all that kind of thing. So. Right. When I was fortunate to get a referral, I felt it could be as good as it could be. Because sometimes mm-hmm. if you ask too soon, it's just kind of a lip service referral. It's not real genuine. and People can see through that. So timing is an issue. For one. Timing is an okay. issue. And so he wrote me a, a referral. It was three sentences tops. And I couldn't have asked for any, any better recommendation. You know, he talked about the quality of my work. The turnaround time, the responsiveness, the ability to work, easy to work with. I mean, the, th- the three things that you want everybody to know about you, uh, he said that without asking. David, would you repeat those three again? Because I, you know, as you were saying those, I was thinking that's, the, at least in my experience, that has been the thing that people comment the most on. And I think that a lot of voice talent take for granted that that means a lot. It does. Everything in life, in my estimation, is about relationships. Mm. So the, the, the sooner you can develop a, a relationship with a client, uh, the better. Um, uh, that leads to your success in referrals. Right. You want to have a quick turnaround time because they want to have a sense that you're being responsive to their needs because really at the end of the day it is all about them, not about you. And you want to deliver a consistent quality product each and every time so that there's no surprises. Apparently, there are people who, believe it or not, are difficult to work with, and they flake out and don't deliver on time. And those things do mean a lot to a client. They mean everything to a client. They absolutely, if they're, if especially if the client is uh, potentially a big client, they don't have time to mess around, right. and they want to go to people they like, they trust, and they know are going to get a good product each and every time. The consistency is huge. Is there a certain way you approach a client, or a certain? Uh, you know, uh, verbiage that you use? Uh, for a referral? For a referral, yes. Um, yeah, I think it varies a little bit, but it's kind of a standard message. You know, I want I never ask them what they think about a project because uh, that, that, I mean, that's sales 101. <laughs> if, if you ask a client what they think, you're going to get an analytical answer, and that's not what you want. You want an emotional answer because... 85% of all buying decisions are based on emotion, not thinking. So how did, you, how did you feel about that project? How would you feel about me working on another project with you? Do you have any peers out there, or other people you know in your industry that could benefit from my service? Mm. You know, those kinds of conversations. So it's always an emotional appeal and it's always a conversation, either, either on the phone or, or via email. And, and are the responses typically positive? I mean, is there anything for people to be afraid of when, when asking for a referral? No. I mean, all they can say is no. Right. 
right? Right. So, I mean, the, the biggest part of getting referrals is just showing up. You know, mm -hmm. you just ask for it. And if you don't get one, oh, well. Eventually you will, and that will lead to something. You know, I do a, I do a bulk email to all my clients uh, once a quarter, uh, specifically asking for a referral. And I, mm -hmm. I'll give them a reason. Um, it might be, hey, I just updated my website. I hope you'll check it out. And, oh, by the way, do you have... Uh, anybody who could use my services, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, my most successful one, uh, and it's on my blog on referrals. Uh, in fact, I put the language of a couple of those emails on that blog so people could just steal them and, and make them their own. Uh, but one was just ask, do you know any, any potential clients, producers, those kinds of things out there who might be looking for uh, voiceover talent or audio production? Because I do both. And uh, I got my best response off off that. I always get, I don't know, two or three new clients every time I do that one. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I also recall you talking about some uh, being, now this is getting off referrals a little bit, but by sure. using like add-on services to increase um, yeah. revenue from yeah. potential. Could you touch on that for a moment? You bet. I, again, I think everything's an opportunity. And so if someone want, hires you for a voiceover project, um, you know, there's a couple couple different things you can come back with. Well, would you like would you like that produced with music and or sound effects? Uh, and of course, you want to charge for that. Uh, do you have Do you feel that you could use this um, in another venue? Maybe a video for your showroom if it's a car dealership. Maybe it's a website application. Uh, maybe it's a sales uh, email that you're sending out to potential clients. You know, what other what other applications do you feel we could use this this on and uh, and see if you can create some more leads that way things they might not have even thought of mm, good i'll give you an example my hotel chain client we just we started doing stuff uh last may and um and we were doing in-home i mean i'm sorry in-room video and and audio for that and then audio for the bus transportation you know from the hotels to the airport and that kind of stuff right. and i said well what do you you know I really like doing this work, and we have a great relationship and stuff. What would you, how would you feel about me uh, doing your on-hold voice messaging, uh, your corporate sales uh, conferences? Just gave him kind of a list of ideas that I knew they would be doing anyway. And he said, "Oh yeah, we should, yeah, we should do that." So I've done corporate videos for him. In fact, I just got two commercials uh, last night that I'm going to do when we get done mm. uh, for a corporate convention that they're putting together. So. Um, yeah, there's no such thing as a stupid question. All they can do is say no. Now, do you outsource a lot of that in terms of the video work and such, or um, is that these skills that you have? The Well, for that particular client, they do their own video. But, oh, okay. Uh, but, yeah, I have a full-service advertising agency as well that I just started. In, uh, in fact, just signed my first client yesterday. Congratulations. And, yeah, thank you. And so, yeah, I have uh, freelancers that do video, graphic designers, that's the other thing is if a client asks me, can you do this? I just say, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I figure out a way to do it. <laughs> there you That's go. how I got my first jingle client. Oh, really? Yeah. It was a friend of mine from high school, if you believe this. And we reconnected about three years ago because of reunions and stuff. Yeah. And she has a business in a shopping center. And she said, you know, our shop, I know you're the voice guy, but can you do jingles? Our shopping center needs a jingle. And I said, Sure. And so I called a friend of mine that I knew could do jingles, and we worked out a partnership. And so now I sell jingles, and he makes them, and it's easy. I love it. I yeah. love it. Well, I, being resourceful and innovative, I get, you know, if nothing else, this should begin to spark some creative thinking. Yeah. Uh, amongst yeah. those watching and listening to this. Yeah. Uh, and I, again, highly recommend for those of you in the, in the voiceover business who aren't satisfied with where you're at and you're looking for a way to grow your business, uh, David is a great resource. Make sure you're checking out his blog. David, promote your website, your blog, anything that, uh, any place you can send people to be able to glean from your knowledge. Well, thanks, Bill. I appreciate you. My primary website is Papa, P O P P A S, Papa's Voice.com. Uh, my automotive website is Papa's Auto Voice.com. Uh, my blog is PapaUnplugged.com. And then uh, if you're interested in checking out my advertising agency, it's uh, SimplifyMyAdvertising.com. Well, David, sure appreciate your, uh, your willingness to share your contribution to the voiceover industry. And, and I'm sure a lot of people who are really trying to grow their business will benefit from this conversation. Thanks, Bill. And thanks for what you do. It's uh, very important to a lot of people.